One, two, one, two. One, two. I'm quite surprised with the overall quality of the recording that came from Dana's session inside of the town hall. Dana was using the Steinberg UR22 Mark II, which is Steinberg's entry-level recording hardware. Dana's also recording using an Apple iPad and Cubase's LE, which is the free application that comes included with this hardware package. Maybe we often think that more expensive and more complex is better, but we are talking about a singer-songwriter here, and a singer-songwriter is telling a story. A good story should translate in a studio, and also in the environment in which it was created, and in Dana's case, that's a simple vocal and an acoustic guitar. We can talk all day about production techniques, but in this case it's two microphones that have been sound-checked, a great artist, a great song, and a matter of hitting record. This setup's not only perfect for singer-songwriters, it's also great for videographers who want high-quality recordings on location. Once Dana's happy with a recording, she can take that recorded product anywhere. All she needs is her iPad. Dana can start adding things like reverb or EQ or other effects to the recording or even do a quick mix down. In this case, the objective of recording was to share the recorded product with me so we could collaborate on an idea. There's a number of different ways you can share or export the project that you've just recorded. Dana and I both use Dropbox to share ideas, so in this case, it was an obvious choice to use Dropbox. Now, if I say I'm impressed with the audio quality of Dana's recording, I'm even more impressed by how easy and fast the transfer process is. Once you grant permission for Cubasis LE to access your Dropbox folder, Cubasis will start compressing and uploading those files to Dropbox, which means it's over to me. I need to download the Cubasis project installer to load Dana's project up inside of Cubase AI. Cubase AI also comes with the Steinberg UR22 Mark II hardware. Dropbox is actually free, so it shouldn't be too hard or expensive for anyone to collaborate in this manner. Once Dana's uploaded the file, I go to my apps folder, select Cubasis LE, and I'll right mouse click on Dana's compressed file to download it directly to my computer's local hard drive. Once you unzip the file, you'll be able to see all of the audio files and the Cubasis LE project. Now we go over to Cubase AI and go to File, Import, and down the bottom of Import you can see Cubase's project. I need to select a project folder to tell Cubase where to store all the files that I'm going to record on the project. Once I've done that, Dana's project is loaded inside of Cubase AI in my studio, and it's exactly as she left it. In front of me, it's easy to see the takes that Dana's recorded, and it's nice because they're both on two tracks, so it's just a matter of naming them. To keep things simple, I'm also using exactly the same hardware that Dana used to record these tracks, so it's a Steinberg UR22 Mark II. It's a great recording, and I've just noticed a couple of vocal parts that are a bit louder, so I've double-clicked on the audio file to get the sample edit window. I'm highlighting the section I want to change, holding down Command with my left hand. I've selected Gain, and I can drop the Gain and Preview and process that so it fits in with the rest of the recording. Dana's EQ and effects settings have also carried across as part of the import, so I can continue on shaping the sound and moving it towards a releasable product. One of the main reasons I guess for collaboration with a producer or a session musician is not only to get a particular skill set, but it's also to have a musical filter. And I think one of the hardest roles a producer or a session musician faces with a great singer-songwriter with a killer track is deciding how little needs to actually go onto the track. In this case, it's not much. And I'm loading up Hellion Sonic SE2, and I'm going to find a piano sound. Once you've selected your instrument, you can further shape your sound by using presets. I'm clicking on the E button in the instrument list, and then going to the channel strip and loading a channel strip preset. There are quite a few presets for different instruments, so generally you'll be able to find something that suits the particular instrument that you're recording, and it's a really good starting point that you can work from in terms of shaping your sound. A good shortcut for adding another track is to right mouse click on the instrument track list. I'm adding a mono audio track, and I'm naming it just to keep things tidy. I think all this track needs is a very simple piano track and a backing vocal track. It's quite late here, and I've come to realize that a lot of what I do when I'm tired, I end up repeating the next day. So I'm getting things set up, and I'm going to come back in the morning with a fresh set of ears.